Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now regular viewers to this channel will know that I ride this BMW R850R. Now over recent months I've been suffering from back problems and I'm finding this bike a bit too heavy to ride now. To get it off its centre stand, put it back on its centre stand, reverse it out of parking places, into parking places, you know the score. I'm finding this bike way too heavy now and I'm looking for something a little bit lighter. Now a friend of mine, John Smith, who collects Harley Davidsons, now he said I ought to get myself an XL883 because he says that the XL stands for extra light. <laughs> I'm not too sure whether whether he's right or not. I do know he's got about 15 Harley Davidson, so maybe he knows one or two things about it. So anyway, in today's video, we are going to ride a Harley Davidson. Now I have never ridden a Harley Davidson before, so it's going to be an amazing experience for me, and I'd like to bring you along as well. So let me show you the bike that I'm going to ride. So here we have it. This is a 2009 XL 883C. Now my friend says of course that the XL stands for extra light <laughs> and that is totally wrong because this bike is actually about 40 kilograms heavier than this if you can believe that. But of course the center of gravity is in a different place. The seats lower so maybe it's going to be a bit lighter to ride. Now this is the XL883C and the C stands for custom. This bike has the bigger 21 inch front wheel. I think other Harleys have about 19, 20, something like that. So this one's got a 21 inch front wheel. It also has the bigger tank. This tank is about four and a half gallons now some sportsters only have a two gallon or maybe even a three gallon tank. Now this engine, when it's pushed, only does about 40 miles to the gallon. So having a two gallon tank, you've got that range anxiety where you're always thinking about looking for a fuel station. So this one has this four and a half gallon tank and I actually, I actually think this tank is really nice. You probably can't see it on the video, but it's a, a white pearlescent tank. It's got this yellowy gold tinge to it. We can see in certain light. Looks absolutely fantastic, as does the rest of the bike. Now I've often thought about buying a Harley Davidson, but it's all this cleaning and polishing has always put me off. Um, another thing that the C has is these forward controls. Now I have never ridden a motorcycle with forward controls before, so that is going to be a bit of a challenge for me. <clears throat> I've always had the, the pegs here and the brake here, so having this where everything's further up is going to be a real challenge. So stay with me now as I take this Harley Davidson for a ride I shall tell you what I think to it. So right I shall put my old BMW away in the garage, put some cameras on the bike, get me riding gear on and then we shall go out for a ride so stick around. Okay so here we are we're all ready to start our ride I've got a camera on the bike I was hoping to put a few more on but just haven't got the right uh, the right fitments to go on here at the minute. I shall have to get some, I should think. Right, let me just show you this a moment. This is the immobilizer fob that uh, comes with the bike. Now there's no buttons on it. But if you try and move the bike without it, then it starts bleeping at you. And an alarm goes off, but there's no there's nothing to switch it off. You've got to put this by the bike to get it to turn off. I wonder what happens if you ride around and this key fob was to fall off. 
Does the bike stop? Does an alarm go off? Let me know in those comments below <laughs> what happens if you lose that key fob. Right, let's take this bike for a ride. Let's get it on down the highway and get her started up. Now the sun's shining now. It's turned into a lovely warm day and here I am in a leather jacket but you can't be too careful as you know. So many idiots about. Okay. Right, I've got to think of how to do this. Um, Turn the key, you hear that bleep there? That's the immobiliser. You put it on to run, I don't know if you heard that then, that's a fuel pump starting up. It's in neutral. Wow. Absolutely wow. The, uh, the sound this bike makes absolutely awesome and this bike has just got the stock pipes on but absolutely amazing wonder what it sound like with some screaming eagles or some Vance and Heinz pipes <laughs> yeah it's uh, motorcycles it's 2009 uh, it's got 10,600 miles on the clock so right let's see let's take it out onto the uh, open road Okay then, right then, let's uh, let's see how this goes then, shall we? I tell you, I'm not uh, I'm not into where these these foot pegs are. That's going to be a real challenge for me. That is. Oh well, we'll see how we get on. That's very very strange. <laughs> putting your feet up here, that's, that's very, very strange indeed, that is, which way we're we going. Uh, we'll just have a quick ride around the village before we take it out on the open road, I think. I'm not, uh, <laughs> not very good with this. Uh, uh, very, very funny, that. Yes, y you're pulling away, and, uh, well, where do your feet go? They go up here. They go out there in front, that's, that's very weird. What a weird way to ride, but uh, that's a uh, feet forward position. It seems very, uh, very comfortable. Yeah, this is weird. You know, for someone like me that's uh, ridden motorcycles since I was 12 years old, um, where the, uh, the foot pegs are in the normal position to actually uh, to ride something like this, where their uh, feet forward. I have been told that there are worse ones you can get where your feet are up here, and that must be very, very strange indeed. We're just going into a, a part here where they're building some 1,250 new homes here at the village of uh, Witham St Hughes. All this uh, farmland they're going to build all these new houses on. We'll just take a steady ride down here so I can get used to everything. Uh, it's quite a nice riding position really. Now I could have uh, chosen uh, a 1200 Sportster that had uh, all the extras on uh, feet forward position like this but it also had ape hangers where they uh, you know it was up like this and you think wow uh, <laughs> let me get re used to the uh, forward controls first before we start playing with ape hangers so yes this is uh, where they're going to build all these houses look you can see them starting already wow 
I'm actually surprised people can buy new homes these days. For the price of them, 280, 300,000 pounds, something like that. Especially now we've got this cost of living crisis going on, so they say. a new roundabout here as well now that's uh, it's very strange having all these roundabouts around here it's getting to be like Milton Keynes it is around here now keep pressing indicators but they're not working for some reason they are they need, they need a good a good press it's not I'm too used to uh, riding my BMW you see all the controls are different and Seating, of course, the seating position is different. Uh, BMW where it rides nice and smooth, and of course, it's got this big screen in front, so you're not getting all this wind coming against you. But I'm used to that anyway. Like I said, been riding motorcycles for years. smooth gear changes out of this it's uh, and it sounds awesome this uh, exhaust note on here these are just the standard pipes on this bike as well we haven't got any screaming eagle or Vance and Heinz things on here I mean if it did have then that would be something else it would really sound awesome then but I'm not sure if they're legal or not maybe that's something else somebody put in the in those comments below whether uh, Screaming Eagle or the Vance and Heinz pipes are actually legal on this bike. So, five speed gearbox. This is the Evolution engine. It's still uh, push rods. Of course, Harley Davidson brought the Sportster out in uh, 1957, I believe. So, you know, and I think basically it still looks the same as it did. It probably rides the same as it did as well, you know. But, uh, a friend of mine, he hired one of these when he went out to the States and he, uh, he hated it. He said it was absolutely terrible. He couldn't get on with it uh, at all. But then of course he rides a Yamaha R1, you know, he's not into custom cruisers. He's into sports bikes and race replicas and things like that, so of course he's not going to like it at all, is he, you know. But uh, I've, had to, I've owned 101 motorcycles, I have to say, over the years. My father first bought me a motorbike when I was 12 years old, so and I've had to loads and loads of them ever since, all sorts. Absolutely all sorts. Never had a Harley Davidson, of course. It's something that uh, I've always wanted to to have a go. I always thought about buying one, but it's all the cleaning and the polishing. It's all this chrome that's everywhere. You know, it's a must be a nightmare if you get it dirty. Ride it out in the uh, the rain and the snow when you get covered in sludge and dirt and oh, to clean it and polishing it, it must be uh, a real chore. So yeah, my friend, he couldn't get on with it, he didn't like it at all. But uh, I'm actually enjoying this. I'm out on a Harley Davidson, that's uh, terrific, absolutely terrific. I know it's only an 883. Uh, was at one time considered the baby of the bunch. I think there's uh, the small one now, 750, 750 Street or something. Looks more like a Kawasaki than a Harley Davidson. Just like the Iron 883, it's all in black, it's all, you know, matte black paintwork. It looks awesome, I have to say that, but... I like 
like uh, I like the Harley Davidsons with all the chrome. Yeah. Seventy-five newton meters of torque. I think this uh, engine has got so quite a torquey engine. Uh, well, so it should be as well for eight-eight-three cc. what it'll go like two up. Just have to try at some point. I'm hoping to make uh, several videos on this bike. Had quite a nice day actually now. I know when I started making the video when I first brought the bike out to uh, to show everyone you know, that I've got uh, got this Harley Davidson to ride, compare it to my BMW R850R. It was rather dull then and cloudy, there's still lots of cloud about, but it, the, the sun's breaking through. Looks like it's going to be a, a really nice day. What a nice day for riding a Harley Davidson as well. You can see all this chrome all shining in the sunlight. One comment that I do have with this bike, the brakes, the, uh, the, the brakes aren't that good. They're, they're okay, but they're not, you know... I mean, this bike is a 2009 Harley-Davidson. Um, it's got a single disc, a two-piston caliper, I think, a single disc, 292 millimeters, I think it is. Uh, it's okay, it'll stop the bike, but it's not, you know, brilliant. I mean, the brakes feel, feel like, uh, like I'm riding a 1976 Triumph Bonneville, you know, something like that. But old-fashioned, shall we call them. I guess Harley-Davidson wanted to keep that uh, that retro look and the retro feel of the bike so it's still very very similar to how it used to be and, and why not everyone appears to be you know into retro now look at uh, manufacturers like Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor and the 650 Continental GT having really good sales and really good reports from people and of course BSA have made a return to making motorcycles now no longer a British company of course now manufactured in India I think as well everything seems to be moving to India these days so. I guess it's the cheap labour, you can keep the cost down and of course they're all into the, the great British names out there as well so yes BSA making a return and again they're making retro machines they're bringing out motorbikes that they look like they're from the 1960s you know and it's a is that a bad thing? maybe people have had enough of sports bikes and race replicas they want to go back to the good old bikes days of the, the Triumph Bonnevilles and the BSAs 650 gold flash and all them, them sort of things I 
mean this does ride like an old motorcycle I mean there's nothing wrong with that at all it's uh, it's glorious it really is it's wonderful it feels like I've gone back 50 years <laughs> 50 maybe maybe a bit longer 60 years perhaps you know Right, so here I am again looking for the uh, the controls and they're up there in front, so I'll get used to it. Notice there's a little bit of banging from underneath the motorcycle. I think the side stand might be a bit worn, a bit loose. Might have to uh, look into that as I'm going over some of these bumps. I can hear something clanging. So the only thing I can think of is the uh, the side stands banging about a bit. loving this ride on this bike it's uh, wonderful and it is like going back in time you're enjoying this ride around on this 883 Harley Davidson probably stop somewhere in a moment if I can find a place to stop we'll have a better look around the bike One thing that uh, I would have liked to have seen on uh, a modern bike, I know it's a classic bike, but a, a modern classic like this is a fuel gauge. Okay, we've got the four and a half gallon tank on here and there's a little light that comes on to say when you're, uh, you're getting low on fuel, I believe. I haven't seen it come on, so I hope there is. But yeah, there should be a light that comes on, but there's no fuel gauge. And like I say, with the uh, the bikes from Royal Enfield, these new bikes from Royal Enfield, they've all got fuel gauges on. And they come up on the mileometer mile down here. You can set that to show you how much fuel you've actually got. So. So that's a big help.
wasn't that absolutely awesome ah, so there you have it that is our first ride on a Harley Davidson and wasn't it absolutely fantastic now I've said before that some people love these some people hate these a friend of mine hired one when he went to the States absolutely hated it but then he's an R1 rider a sports bike rider but I ride everything I've owned 101 motorcycles over the years and it has been a lifetime ambition to ride a Harley Davidson so this is one tick off my bucket list and yeah what can I say it was absolutely fantastic I love the way that this bike looks and the way that it sounds uh, standard pipes on this bike still sounds awesome if you put screaming eagles on then uh, it would sound unbelievable um, front disc on this bike not all that great I have to say I'm guessing Harley Davidson kept it this way to keep that retro look you've got a 292 millimeter front disc on there with a two pot caliper now this bike is actually heavier than my BMW and my BMW's got twin discs at the front four pot calipers and the braking system on that is absolutely excellent but it brakes it's adequate you've got a single disc on the back that too is it's okay it's like riding a 1970s motorcycle you know <laughs> uh, for me but I mean Harley Davidson have been making this sports since 1957 and they've kept that basic same design uh, this of course has the new evolution engine in it it's still the old design it's still an old push rod engine okay so they've kept that but ah, brilliant absolutely brilliant accelerates ever so good for an 883 not too sure about these forward pegs I'm still trying to get used to them I'm, I'm still trying to find <laughs> you know when I come to a, a junction that I'm still trying to look for the uh, the foot pegs but they're up the front there so very very good anyway really enjoyed this now the rear passenger seat on here I mean if your wife or your girlfriend or maybe your boyfriend if you're that way inclined has got a huge rear end <laughs> if she's got a big ass then you're gonna have trouble fitting on this bike uh, another thing I don't like of course is that there's no fuel gauge all of the new retro bikes from Royal Enfield or the new BSAs that are coming out they've got a, a fuel gauge mixed in with the speedo um, okay we've got the four and a half gallon tank on here it's a bit bigger than other sportsters uh, five-speed gearbox that's very very good now what else can I tell you about this bike belt drive it's got a lovely belt drive on here so there's no oily chain to mess about with also very very low seat height let me get back on this again now I'm five foot nine my feet are flat on the floor legs are slightly bent so it's an ideal height for me this bike actually and uh, the foot pegs yeah they're easy to get to but very very different for me I'm, I'm so used to having foot pegs about here so whenever I get to a road junction I'm always looking for the foot pegs but they're up here so that's great rear shockers on here fully adjustable I don't really adjust the shocks on bikes much not unless I'm carrying passengers or maybe carrying luggage if I'm going somewhere I will make the uh, the rear suspension a little bit stiffer so really that's about it for this Harley-Davidson XL883C 
I've really enjoyed riding it. Now I'm going to make several other videos on this bike as well. There's a few uh, classic car and bike shows I might take it to. And of course I want to ride it up through the city of Lincoln. Do a bit of filtering in that. See what it's like in traffic. So I should be doing that uh, over the next couple of weeks. So anyway, that is it for this uh, ride on this bike. Thank you all so very, very much for joining me on my first ride on a Harley Davidson. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too. So thank you all so very, very much for watching. And please, everybody out there in YouTube land, stay safe. And I shall see you all again soon in the next video. Take care now.